Hello, welcome to our Recap Plus channel with me, Matthew. Today we will watch a recap movie called Greater, released in 2016. This is a spoiler content video. So please turn on the subtitle and let's start the story. Brandon Burlesworth, a young boy recently baptized, confided in his mother about the frequent taunts he received for being overweight. She provided him with words of encouragement, assuring him that God had a purpose in shaping him, and advised him not to heed the opinions of others. Brandon, with an elder brother named Marty, had developed a habit of lounging on the couch, watching TV, and indulging in snacks. Despite Marty's attempts to change his ways, Brandon remained committed to his interests. However, his life took a significant turn when he watched an American football player on TV and expressed a deep desire to become like them. Brandon's mother, a nurturing figure who supported her children's wholesome pursuits, encouraged his aspirations, even though she had reservations about the seriousness of his intentions. Eager to embrace his newfound passion, Brandon decided to join the school football team. As a newcomer to the sport, he made mistakes during a match, leading to a scolding from the coach, and Marty and his mother faced ridicule from onlookers. In the audience that day was Coach Tice, a high school coach, who approached Brandon with words of encouragement. He suggested that if Brandon genuinely aimed to become a better player, he should be the first to arrive at practice and the last to leave. After the practice session, Brandon was picked up by his father, who had been separated from his mother due to his alcoholism. Despite Marty's warning, Brandon's father continued to drink, leading to his immediate return to Marty's care. A few years later, Brandon entered high school and joined the football team, remembering Coach Tice's advice. He consistently arrived early for practice, willing to put in the extra effort to achieve his goals. Brandon was puzzled by the special attention he received, and he asked Coach Tice if he thought he was wasting his time. Coach Tice explained that greater effort could make maintaining success easier when two players achieve similar levels of success. One day, Brandon and Marty attended a University of Arkansas football practice to approach Coach Bender of Arkansas University. Brandon's dream was to join an NFL league team, and to do that, he needed to earn a scholarship by playing for a college team. Coach Bender, however, showed little interest in helping Brandon, citing his physique as unsuitable for college football. Brandon confidently asserted that he could undergo the necessary physical transformation. Following his high school graduation, Brandon was offered a scholarship at Arkansas Tech University. However, his heart was set on the University of Arkansas, and he tore up the scholarship letter. Despite financial instability, Brandon remained resolute in his determination to enroll at the University of Arkansas without a scholarship, leaving Marty dismayed. Late one evening, while overhearing his mother sorting through bills, Brandon began to understand the financial implications of his decision. Realizing the sacrifices his mother had made, Brandon decided to forego his dream and enroll at Arkansas Tech University. Unbeknownst to him, his mother had secured a loan to cover his expenses at the University of Arkansas for an entire year. Brandon's campus was just a 90-minute drive from home, and with his mother's support and a cell phone provided by Marty, he set out to join the football team. However, his physique made him a target for ridicule from fellow newcomers. Coach Bender had noted his underweight status, but it did not deter him from joining the team. Brandon was designated as a walk-on player and primarily supported the training of scholarship players. Coach Bender believed in giving everyone an equal opportunity, despite criticism from other coaches who questioned the investment of time in training walk-on players. As preparation for the upcoming season proceeded, select players were chosen to participate in the preparatory activities for that year's game, but Brandon was not among them. He approached Coach Bender, expressing his determination to earn a scholarship. Unfortunately, Coach Bender couldn't offer assistance, leaving Brandon with no choice but to maintain his uniform until the next season. If he failed to secure a scholarship next season, he would have to relinquish his dream. Brandon not only faced the challenge of securing a scholarship but also continued bullying from his classmates due to his meticulously organized daily schedules. However, his mother provided unwavering encouragement, helping him persevere. During a practice session, Brandon accidentally almost injured a fellow player. Coach Bender admonished him but also came to his aid, reprimanding other players who were ridiculing Brandon. After completing his training, Coach Bender took a compassionate approach toward Brandon, recognizing his unwavering dedication. Impressed by Brandon's commitment, Coach Bender decided to help him shed weight. Brandon initiated his training sessions earlier and concluded them later than his peers. Each day, his weight gradually diminished, and his playing technique improved significantly. This transformation left his friends, who had previously bullied him, astonished. 
When Brandon engaged in one-on-one -on -one matchups with some of the best players among them, nobody expected him to emerge victorious. Coach Bender hadn't explicitly instructed him to win but to utilize his technique effectively. Brandon's remarkable change earned the recognition of his fellow players for the first time. On a particular night, Brandon received an invitation to a bar from his friends. Despite knowing that Brandon abstained from alcohol, they deliberately ordered a drink containing alcohol. After consuming two glasses of the drink, Brandon disclosed that he only had a one-year window to study there and expressed his appreciation for their kindness. An awkward atmosphere suddenly descended upon them. A waitress soon arrived and claimed that they had run out of alcohol. Realizing that he was the target of a prank, Brandon left in disappointment. Feeling guilty about consuming alcohol, Brandon decided to go for a run in the pouring rain. His friends initially considered leaving him alone but, overcome by guilt, decided to run with him. The incident ultimately led to reconciliation among the friends. In brief, the season's games commenced, and their team's supporters flocked to the stadium in massive numbers, causing the stadium to reverberate with their voices. Following the game, Coach Bender conveyed the delightful news to Brandon that he had secured a full scholarship from the University of Arkansas, enabling him to continue his studies and training. Brandon promptly shared the joyful news with his family, who were overjoyed and hadn't anticipated his success in achieving his goals. In 1997, during a match against Florida, Brandon's vision suddenly blurred, impairing his performance. He promptly informed his coach that something was amiss with his eyesight. Consequently, Brandon was provided with glasses to correct his vision. His new appearance with glasses evoked laughter from his teammates, who found it amusing. A few days later, Brandon received news that his father had been hospitalized due to lung cancer. While Brandon expressed his intent to continue training, Coach Bender recommended that Brandon visit his father first. Eventually, Brandon, accompanied by Marty, visited their father in the hospital. His father expressed regrets and asked Brandon to take good care of their mother. After Marty and Brandon prayed for their father's recovery, he regrettably passed away. That season, the Arkansas Razorbacks were experiencing a challenging run of losses, prompting a change in coaching and a team overhaul. Brandon inquired of Coach Bender about the path to the NFL, to which Coach Bender advised him to strive to become an All-American. However, this posed a challenge as it was Brandon's final year with the team, and Coach Bender was unsure if the new coach would even grant him playing time, let alone the All-American award. Coach Bender cautioned Brandon not to set his expectations too high, as less than 2% of college league players would be drafted into the professional NFL, and scouting primarily focused on winning teams. The following day, the new coach found Brandon still on the training ground late into the evening. Brandon expressed his belief that there was no need to overhaul the team because he was determined to secure victory in his final year with the team. A few years later, the Arkansas Razorbacks underwent a renaissance under a new coach and a new program. Recognizing that this was his final year in college, Brandon was determined to give his all to the team to realize his dream. He organized a summer camp to train his friends in the same manner that he had trained himself. Despite initial resistance, his friends eventually embraced the training, and their perseverance paid off. The team's reputation soared, victories kept piling up, and they garnered a significant following. The journey of the Arkansas Razorbacks that year became a legend in the world of sports, with Brandon emerging as the main star and a candidate for the best walk-on player in the history of university football. The much-anticipated match finally arrived, with the stakes high and the score difference minimal. Arkansas and their supporters were brimming with confidence that they would clinch victory and be crowned national champions that year. However, in the final moments, Brandon accidentally tripped a friend who was carrying the ball, resulting in the loss of the ball and their hopes being dashed. They had to accept defeat, and the title of the best team in America remained with Tennessee. Following the match, Brandon approached the friend he had tripped and offered an apology. He implored his friend to make a statement so that people wouldn't blame him, showing that he didn't want his friend to bear the blame. However, his friend affirmed that it wasn't his fault, emphasizing that falling was an inherent part of the game. Although guilt-ridden, Brandon contended that the ball wouldn't have fallen if his feet hadn't obstructed its path. His friend insisted on taking responsibility for the dropped ball to relieve Brandon of guilt. In the aftermath of this emotionally charged moment, Brandon wept in Coach Bender's arms. A few days later, Brandon and his family received the astonishing news that he had won the All-America Award. This announcement filled Brandon and his family with immense joy, as it meant that Brandon would be recruited to join the professional NFL. He was swiftly recruited by the Indianapolis Colts. Upon joining the team, Brandon participated in the Indianapolis Colts minicamp as the youngest member. 
To his surprise, he was immediately appointed as a starter for the following season's games. He experienced a mix of happiness and bewilderment, as something he had always worked hard for was suddenly within his grasp. His coach reassured him that it wasn't easy, as Brandon had labored for years to achieve it. In the ensuing years, Brandon had the opportunity to reconnect with his coach and teammates during a visit to Arkansas. He was invited to attend his own farewell party but couldn't make it due to prior commitments, including a meeting with his mother and a return to Indianapolis. Brandon confessed that he always missed home upon arriving in Arkansas. Driving home, Marty also embarked on his journey back. Upon his arrival, he was taken aback by the presence of police cars parked outside the house and his mother's frantic voice emanating from inside. The police had arrived to deliver the devastating news that Brandon had been involved in an accident that tragically claimed his life. This shattering reality left Marty momentarily stunned, but his mother's cries jolted him back to the moment. They never could have fathomed that Brandon, who had worked diligently and had just realized his dream of joining the NFL, would depart the world so suddenly at the tender age of 22. At the funeral, Marty posed a poignant question to his mother, wondering why God had taken Brandon so swiftly, especially when he was on the brink of savoring the fruits of his hard work. His mother's response was that the answer to that question could only be found in Brandon's life. She found it difficult to accept the fact that someone as kind and resolute as Brandon had been taken away so abruptly. However, she took solace in the realization that Brandon had succeeded in inspiring countless people. Following these events, the University of Arkansas awarded 18 scholarships, one of which was dedicated to a talented walk-on player. Subsequently, the Brandon Burlsworth Foundation was established to assist visually impaired children and provide them with free tickets to football matches to serve as motivation. Marty also established the Brandon Football Camp to impart Brandon's football philosophy. In 2010, the Burlsworth Trophy was introduced, and presented to the best player who initiated their career as a walk-on player. Brandon's locker remained preserved since 1999 as a reminder for Arkansas Razorbacks players. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. You can also click on the videos on your screen to watch more interesting videos. And please share your thoughts about today's video in the comments down below. Lastly, always remember to stay safe and stay healthy. See you in the next video.